It's Travel Michigan. I'm Dave Lorenz along with Michelle Grinnell. And Michelle, we're heading up north. We are. We're headed back across the bridge mm. to St. Ignace, where um, the home, which is the home of Fort Dubod Museum, which is a great cultural and historical attraction um, once you get across the bridge. And we have Deborah Cox, who is the gift shop and gallery manager at Fort Dubod Museum, on the show with us today. So, welcome to the show, Deborah. Thank you. It's nice to be here. So you guys have a great new exhibit, Captured Spirits, um, at the museum. Um, but before we kind of start talking about that that exhibit and some of the specific exhibits, um, talk a little bit about the museum itself, um, what uh, sort of stories it's telling, and, and the sorts of things, the, the collections that are there. Sure. Um, actually, written in last night's paper, there's a section on looking back, and a lot of people I don't think are aware of St. Ignis and um, the location and how important we are to the area. Mm -hmm. Um, St. Ignis is known as the the mother city of Detroit um, and is Old Fort Dubois on the present site of St. Ignis. Hmm. Cadillac, as a representative of King Louis XIV, commanded the French battalion, and he ruled the territory from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico. Hmm. It was from St. Ignis that Cadillac went with his soldiers in 1701 to lay the foundation for the city of Detroit. Wow. And a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. And so we claim to be the third oldest city after St. Augustine and then Sault Ste. Marie. Right, right. But it's kind of nice to tie in how far St. Ignis reaches the, the the Detroit area and all of Michigan. Yeah, it's amazing so, how, how you know you know over history the impact that some communities have had on the entire country, like like the Sioux you mentioned, and like St. Ignis, and all the things that happened there that uh, helped to create what we are today. Right, and we pride ourselves, but a lot of people we're we're trying to portray the fact that. There is so much history here, and that kind of leads you into the idea of what the museum actually captures, and it's from that pre-contact period into what we know say Ignis say, today. And so as you come into the museum, you're greeted usually by something that um, is portraying the moment, um, whether it's a celebration of the annual the War of 1812, for example, or the Civil War, some sort of period that is pertinent to the nation. But then you walk through the double doors into an area that starts with the pre-contact before um, the English and the British and the French um, landed here. And so that in itself leads a lot of people that aren't aware of what we actually started with here. Hmm. And um, it's before the Voyagers and the natives were um, in charge of what was happening in St. Ignace. So it's it's a beautiful way to transcend into today's culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if and, you're if you're you know interested in learning about uh, kind of Native American culture in Michigan, this is one of the best places to go to, right? We've been told time and time again by people that visit from all over the world that they've never seen this much information. And we're primitive in the fact that we're not high tech with, um, you know, bells and whistles and push button demonstrations. We don't have that. We actually have, you have to read about, and we have guided tours that try and give you more of an insight of what you're witnessing. And that is kind of special in itself, where you're, you can have a self-guided tour, but more importantly, you're able to talk to someone that has either experience or there's a native in the area that it's a descendant of a certain tribe. And we're, we're so very proud of the people that walk through here, but then the people that visit us and take something back away is um, overwhelming. Well, you have a a new exhibit that you've just recently opened called Captured Spirits, and uh, this is really interesting. If I understand it right, um, this is kind of a a collection of, um, I think it's digital displays, if I get it right, of uh, paintings that mostly were destroyed years ago. That's correct. Um, Thomas McKinney um, 
worked under four different presidents in Washington, D.C., and one of the things that he doesn't get enough credit for is being one of the most important advocates for the Native America. Hmm. And as he traveled and did he went about his business, he not only befriended, but he respected and he worked for the Native Americans, even though he was under the direction of the U.S. government. And he created this museum in his office that housed these beautiful, beautiful portraits and collections of gifts or trade items that the natives, you know, would come into town and um, be doing um, business with their treaty signing or some sort of land exchange. Mm -hmm. And they would often bring gifts of their gifts. And Thomas McKitty would also um, reciprocate with different items, medallions and different things. And the portraits were commissioned by artists that were really of the time. They weren't famous after these um, portraits were completed and destroyed, but um, James Otto was one and Charles Bird King. Now, the art community knows those names only because of their beautiful portraiture of mostly Native America. Mm -hmm. And in Thomas... In his office, these beautiful parts were whipped on the walls. And so then, as people would travel in, they said, you know, you've got to, you've got to share this. This is like the thing that's ever been seen. And so at the time, he thought about it and decided to um, journey with a man named James Hall, who actually wrote biography of each of the native portraits that hmm. appeared. And then they went next step, and that was to make a collection of beautiful lithographs. And, and luckily that was done, you know, the lithographs, because you couldn't just, you know, bring it to the Xerox machine, you know, back then. That's right. Copied and, them and off, the, and uh, as I understand it, there was a, a big fire, and all the originals were lost. All but eight, oh. to our knowledge, all but eight. Yeah. So if you think about that, culturally speaking and historically speaking, this is the only documentation mm -hmm. that we have of how these people appeared. And I mean, literally, not necessarily safe, but I'm talking about the regalia, yeah, and, and, how they, how they yeah. dressed. And how they would have uh, done certain, you know, performed certain ceremonies or special events. And, uh, That's correct. So at least there's some documentation of that. And neat thing is, now you can see that these uh, digital uh, copies are now available, these rare lith lithographs of Native American uh, culture. It's all right there right now at the Fort de Bois Museum in St. Ignace. And well, I, I just think it's fantastic that, that you've found these uh, pieces, and you have them all there, Deborah. So, Deborah Cox, thank you so much for joining us today. We uh, recommend people check that out uh, at the uh, Fort Dubois Museum. For more information, just go to fortdebois.com. That is F O R T D E B U A D E dot com. Uh, and you'll be happy you did, I'll tell you that. Uh, speaking of uh, uh, things around the state to see and do, we have a lot of events happening right now, Michelle. We absolutely do. Um, you know, I love the the smell of fresh wood, and you can do that at Wood Shaving Days at Hartwick Pine State Park uh, up in the Grayling area. Um, they're going to have a historic steam-powered sawmill um, and lots of demonstrations and, and great things um, to experience there. Uh, Faster Horses Country Music Festival is coming back to Michigan. Michigan International Speedway, uh, the 18th, July 18th through the 20th. Uh, lineup includes Tim McGraw, Keith Urban, Miranda Lambert, Kit Moore, Cassidy Pope, and many, many others. So that's a great event. Check that out. Uh, the U.S. Title Series boat, boat Races head to the Village of Constantine um, on the St. Joseph River, uh, July 18th through the 20th. 
And we've got the Great Lakes Sea Kayak Symposium uh, up in Grand Marais, the 16th through the 20th. It's a gathering of sea kayak and paddle sports enthusiasts. So that be sure to check that out if that is a sport that you love. Uh, we've got Christmas in July in Saginaw at the Children's Zoo at Celebration Square on the 22nd of July. And Charlevoix Venetian Festival, the 19th through the 26th of this month. Uh, it's a week-long flurry of color and pageantry to highlight the summer season. Uh, last but not least, we have the Ionia Free Fair, July 17th through the 26th. So go to michigan.org to find more on these events and many, many more. I, too, love the smell of freshly cut, uh, like, white pine. Just another thing I'm allergic to, by the way. Wow. <clears throat> That's true. unfortunate for you. I know it is. Hey, uh, I'm not allergic to the uh, Great Lakes Bay Area. It's a great place to go. We're going to learn about that next right here on Travel Michigan, where your trip begins at michigan.org.